Zooks. All right, here's the thing I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to do a video on the... <laughs> All right. Yes, I know, Mr. Knightley. I know, God, we all do. A video. All right. Ah, good God. Okay, I wanted to do a video on movies. Specifically, next year, 2017, there is an unusual amount of movies that I absolutely have to see. I have this thing where I don't like to see bad movies. Uh, generally, <clears throat> if... Generally, if I'm not excited about a film and it isn't reviewed, like, super duper well, I don't see it in the theater. Unless there's some reason for it. James Cameron's Avatar is an example. Like, I didn't wasn't hearing great things about it, but I heard it was visually amazing. So that's a theater movie. That's, that's you go to the cinema to see that. But, but overall, generally just stuff I'm really interested in in the first place. Like, stuff I'm going to see later on anyway, but... I want to I want to see in the movies. I want to see it first. I want to see it on a big screen. And 2017 is looking to be like this unusual year where it's like there's a lot of stuff I want to see. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I love James Gunn as a as a director and a writer, I guess too. I really liked the specials. It was one of my favorite movies ever. It's one of the few movies I've seen more than 30 times. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy was... It's easily one of my favorite Marvel movies. I like it. There's nothing like it. There, There's nothing like it. And a sequel to that... If he can just maintain... Like, if you just maintain that same level, that would be amazing. I think he's going to surpass it. I think the sequel might actually be better than the original. If that's the case, that's, that's going to be amazing. Okay, Thor Ragnarok. I'm going through these quick, because I don't want to... Oh, shit, what do I have to say about most of these? Thor Ragnarok is... I continue, it's another MCU movie, so I'm going to see it in the theater no matter what. It's Anthony Hopkins, again, in the more the forefront from what I understand. Uh, Tom Hiddleston is also always amazing to see. Uh, it's Thor, it's a bunch of awesome characters, and the idea that we might even get a glimpse of Doctor Strange, maybe even have him be kind of integral to the story. I'm I'm so sold on that. Like I I have no choice but to see this. I'll I'll likely take a day off work to see this because I tend to have a great day <laughs> when I do that. So why would I not do that again? Thor Ragnarok. I, nothing else to say about it. It looks like I think I've mentioned before. I think the original plan. I don't know where this came from. Maybe it's something I made up. I thought the original plan was each character got three movies. So, three Iron Man movies, three Captain America movies, for example, and three Thor movies. If that were the case, this is the last Thor movie. The last Thor-titled movie. I don't know if they're sticking to that. I've heard rumors about an Iron Man 4. But, briefly, overall I don't think it's a bad plan, as a general scheme. Simply because it's not just that they have a whole bunch of characters at this point, giving every single one of them endless movies, just you know, where do you stop, but it doesn't give you room for the new characters, of which a lot are coming up. So, three isn't bad, and it doesn't mean the characters are gone, just that they'll have, uh, be less in the forefront, they'll be more likely to appear in the team movies, Avengers, Infinity War, and so forth. So, I'm kind of cool with the trilogy title character, Schematica. Um, but we'll see how that holds up. I would be perfectly fine with this being the last Thor title movie. I'd love to see the character and other stuff, but we'll see how that goes. Okay, next. Spider-Man Homecoming, and this one is exciting, simply because 
I like Spider-Man movies in general, even the ones that weren't that great. I, I like, I love them to death. I tend to be more forgiving of their flaws than other people, like I'm uh, more willing to see, and, which is odd. I, I'm not, by and large, super fond of Spider-Man. Like, live-action movies have made me more appreciate characters I didn't really like in the comics. Iron Man being a big one, Thor being another, actually, now that I think about it. Captain America is kind of on the fence about it. It wasn't, it wasn't someone I was excited about. But seeing them live action, it's like, oh, this is how this character can be cool. This is pretty darn cool. Spider-Man should be that way to me, too. And maybe it was back in, God, at this point, 90... Holy crap. When was uh, Tobey Maguire for Spider-Man? A long-ass time ago at this point. Anyway. Uh, moving on. Spider-Man Homecoming is MCU who does live-action superhero movies very, very well. They are the Pixar of live-action superhero movies. I'm just going to say that. I've mentioned something like that in the past. I'm going to say it now. Spider-Man, Tom Holland's Spider-Man, was perfect in Civil War. He was perfect. I can't imagine anything he could have done that would have made him better, or anything that he did even slightly bad. It, everything about the character was compelling, everything about it was perfect. It was just perfect. It was perfect Spider-Man. Say what you will about that film. I actually have my own complaints about the second climax of that, of Civil War. Overall, I liked the movie, though. But the Spider-Man aspect was perfect. No part of that was done poorly. Loved it to death. So, Homecoming, an entire movie dedicated to him, I'm psyched. You know, I'm sold. This could be the best Spider-Man movie ever. Okay. I don't remember what number I'm on. I don't care. Uh, the next one is interesting to me because I heard nothing whatsoever about it until very, very recently, and I kind of stumbled on it by accident. Like, I was compiling this list not this specific list, but I was like kind of looking through, oh, what movies are coming out next year? And I just started doing a search of it, and I stumbled onto this one. I was like, I've heard nothing about this. And this is very interesting. And this is The Dark Tower. This is a quasi adaption slash sequel to Stephen King's The Tower. Uh, I suspect it'll be a very concentrated version of it. I mean, any one of the Dark Tower books is too big to fit in a movie. There's just too much stuff, too much story, too much going on, too many events, too many characters, and so on. So, I suspect this will be a reimagining and a compression of that. Kind of like uh, the th third Ring Cycle movie. What was that? Uh, Return of the King? More like that, because that was a very big book, and all events were, were just crunched. I'm like, we need to get through this shit quickly. There's a lot going on. So, characters were removed, stuff was ignored. It was just too much material. I think the same thing's going to happen here. And that's July. That is like... That's less than... That's a little over half a year. That's like seven months away. Dear freaking Christ, how can it be this close? And I haven't seen so much as, a, as anything. I've seen no advertising about this. Oh, hey kids, my soul belongs to Disney. Like, I'm looking at this list. They just own my shit. Star Wars, Episode 8. Star Wars, Episode 8. Okay, what is there to say about this? <laughs> you're starting to get where, where this list is coming from it's like it's just a list of stuff well I can't not watch Star Wars Episode 8 in the theater how, how do you do that how, do, how does how, how and what's more is it's not just I would see this even if I had no even if this were a standalone film which I'm going to see all those too god fucking damn it but even if there was, wasn't anything, I'd be interested in it. But there is. There's a, a huge amount in, in investment in it. I saw Force Awakens. I really liked Force Awakens. I'd, I understand why people had complaints, some complaints. And I 
am on board with some of those. By and large, I love that film. It was a great movie that was such a wonderful return, such a contrast to the horrible failure that was the prequels. I, I do not listen to apologists for those. Those were just fucking terrible. Um, as an aside, I am expecting... Uh, this needs a little bit of setup. One of the complaints about Episode Eight was that uh, Ray was a Mary Sue. She could do too much. And I would argue, my comeback to that, which I haven't heard anyone else make this argument, so here's my argument, is that she's not the protagonist. She is so close to being the protagonist, she's in a unique category of her own. I'd argue Finn is the protagonist, clearly the protagonist himself, but Ray shares protagonist duties with him. <laughs> duties. Uh, my point being, I don't think she was the, the absolute, she is the protagonist or a protagonist in a film with multiple, whatever the protagonai, protagonists, whatever. She's a secondary protagonist, a very close, but not even a normal secondary protagonist, and that's not a n normal thing anyway. She's a, a very important, very significant second primary secondary protagonist. This terminology this just fails me at this point. My point being, and I do have one, is that in this movie, in Force Awakens, the first new Star Wars movie, Rey was... Finn was the protagonist, Rey was this very close, I'm almost the protagonist, but not quite. Like a lot of the, the she-could-do-anything problems that would be in a protagonist are obviated a little bit by the fact that we don't know her backstory. We, don't, we need to know that stuff to say, that's stupid, or, oh, okay, of course she can do all this stuff, here's why. I think episode 8 will be the opposite. It will be an explanation of where Ray's abilities came from, the ones that weren't explained. Like, she explained she already flew a ship, just not into space, and da 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 But she had some abilities like, well, how, how did you get good at this, this, and that? How can you be good at everything? Understandable. It's an understandable, uh, and even my argument that she's a secondary protagonist, a strong secondary protagonist, is contentious. Anyway, I think in the next film, in episode 8, Ray will be the protagonist, and Finn, if he shows up, and I suspect he will, he'll be the secondary protagonist. He'll be in a, a similar role in that film that she was in the previous one. That's my pure theory. It is. All right, moving on, moving on. Whew. Next on our cavalcade of fun, Alien Covenant. This is a sequel to uh, Prometheus. And I've heard some people really didn't like Prometheus. I understand why. Significant scenes were cut out. But I really liked Prometheus. I really liked it a lot. More than I'd care to admit. Well, obviously not more than I'd care to admit. I just admitted it. But that's neither here nor there. I liked the Geiger-inspired art and design. It was beautiful. It was definitely a horror film, which a lot of the other Aliens movies weren't or weren't very good at. The first one was. The second one definitely was not. The third one... Or third, fourth one... Take your pick. Make your arguments. Who can say? This one, I, I want to see him get a chance to do more. To do more with this. To explore this universe more. He's obviously doing a prequel sort of kind of reimagining. Fine and cool. That's fine. I have no problem with that. Just, you know, I want to see more. You know, this, this movie could act as penance for a lot of the sins in the last one. If that makes any sense. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. I Once again, I do want to see it. I think more Geiger-inspired art and 
design and monsters and all that look awesome on a giant screen, so I have to see this. Next, next, next. next. Logan. True confessions here. Full disclosure. I didn't even see the second Logan movie, second uh, Wolverine movie. So the first one wasn't very good. I wasn't hearing amazing things about the second one. I saw bits of it. I actually saw the first ten minutes or so. I wasn't super impressed with it. Um, not enough that I would like, oh, I will like, have to see this now. So I, I just didn't. I just didn't end up I stopped watching it, didn't end up going back to it, so I just haven't seen the second one. And I've heard it wasn't that great. I've heard people, I've heard both arguments. And I wasn't even going to see this one. I had no plans to. My plan was, maybe I'll go back and see the second Wolverine movie, and after that, maybe if I feel like I still have Wolverine on the brain, I'll watch this on Netflix or something like that, or, or Amazon Prime, or, or whatever, if I get around to it. That plan was destroyed the second I saw the trailer. The first trailer was, it was essentially a teaser. It has the... the... <laughs> the, the Hurt song, the Johnny Cash version of it, the, you know, old Logan, old man Logan, old, old, old man... Professor Charles Xavier in a bleak wasteland living in a fallen water tower where we're trying to get by. Mutants have essentially been exterminated or extinct due to genetic problems and, and all this sort of stuff. I'm like, holy fuck, tonally amazing. Such a departure for a superhero movie. MCU does exciting Marvel. Marvel Studios does exciting, fun superhero films well. But that said, Fox has been really good about making... Fox and WB. Give WB credit. They're the ones who did the Batman Begins and so on. Good at making depressing superhero movies. And I'm actually way crazy cool on depressing superhero movies. Shockingly so. Like, this is depressing, oppressive, sad, dark, strange. I, I, I want to cry after seeing this fun summer blockbuster. I couldn't be more satisfied. Money well spent. That's just how I am. I'm funny about this. I think I've mentioned before, I, my comics were DC, were, uh, DC Vertigo. That was my my bag. So I'm I'm more on online like that. This looks really good. This looks like a thoughtful looks like a dark, bleak, thoughtful film that just happens to have the X-Men in it. All right. Okay. So, so, Train Spotting 2. T2, not the Terminator one, the Train Spotting one, is based on uh, the novel by, what is it, Irvine Welsh, I think? Irvine Welsh, porno. He made a sequel to Train Spotting. Train Spotting, the first movie, is based on a novel called Train Spotting. Funny that. And, but later he made, the writer who made the novel, made a sequel to that novel called Porno. T2 Train Spotting is uh, the sequel to the first Train Spotting movie. And it's literally the same cast, well, the ones who survived anyway. And, I mean, I'm just looking at the cast and it's like Ewan McGregor. Johnny Lee Miller, Robert Carl, like it's the same cast. That'll be amazing. I mean, that was just such, I'm going to call it, that is the most upbeat, fun movie about heroin addiction in existence, in history. T2, 
take that requiem for a dream so yeah I mean this is this looks like fun this looks like a good time I really liked train spotting once again uh, depressing dark I mean this is a this is a black comedy. This is a really black comedy. Or at least Train Spotting was. I don't know. I haven't seen this one out. It hasn't come doesn't come out till January. This one's coming up. I'm kinda stoked about that. I this I uh, this I'm seeing in the theater. I have to. And that's more of a movies like this you don't have to see in the theater. It's nice to see them on a big screen, but it doesn't really add to it. I'm talky movies in my mind are better the comfort of your own home, but I just want to get to this movie first. I want to see it before, like everyone, like spoilers are just everywhere out in the world. Although, there's a novel based on this, so nothing would stop there from being spoilers anyway. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm seeing this goddamn movie. Fuck it. I mentioned I stumbled onto The Dark Tower and actually a few other movies kind of by accident. I was like looking for it occurred to me that there were a lot of movies I wanted to see in 2017. I started looking for them and found a whole bunch of things that made me go, oh my god, holy goddamn shit. One of them was Despicable Me 3. At first it was like, oh, I really liked Despicable Me. Number two was okay. It was pretty good. It was a good, it was a fun movie. Uh, the sort of, not necessarily a kid's film, but an animated, an animated movie. I haven't actually been out to see a lot of them. I have not even seen Frozen or Brave. You know, marking myself a, an awful heretic, I suppose. Uh, but this one looked fun. I, I really like Despicable Me, so I'm like, yeah, I'll watch Despicable Me 3. Then I started looking into it, and I was like, wait, whoa, what the hell? Trey Parker is the voice actor in this? Is one of the main characters? I didn't realize that was Kristen Wiig as the... Uh, as the love interest, Lucy Wilde. Um, well, damn. I mean, shit. <laughs> Movies I want to see in 2017. The ridiculously long list continues with Ghost in the Shell. Ghost in the Shell, I believe, was... A groundbreaking. I saw it when it first came out, ish. Not when it first first came out, but shortly after that, in ninety. God, was that ninety five? God damn, I'm old. Regardless, it was an amazing, groundbreaking movie. I mean, it, the art was fantastic. The story was very interesting, and the idea of. Seeing it in in live action, I mean, at this day and age, what they could do for for live action movies. And it was originally 1995, and there was a sequel, which I did in fact see. Although the funny part about that is, I I honestly there's a lot of the story I can't remember how it went. Like, if someone said, okay, you saw that movie, what was it about? And it's like, well, I haven't seen it in, like, 15 years at least. I, I couldn't really tell you. What interests me is Scarlett Johansson, who's an amazing, I think, very underrated actress. I've seen her in a lot of stuff where I, was, where I thought she stole this, the show. Lucy being one. But a few others. Under the Skin. Uh, uh, quite a few others. She's a very good actress. This looks like a great film. It looks like it'll, once again, be visually stunning on a big IMAX or the equivalent theater, you know, three stories high. This will look fantastic. Visually stunning. I think it was someone else who mentioned, with movies, visually stunning isn't enough. It's like, just the way special effects and CGI have worked, the bar has been raised. You you have to be visually stunning. That's the entrance level at this point. That on top of Scarlett Johansson, on top of this, f frankly, fantastic story. The Blade Runner-esque Neo-Tokyo. Ah, that'd be, that'll be so great. Or it'll suck. I can't imagine it'll be mediocre. 
And regardless, even if it, it somehow ends up shitty, it'll still be beautiful. That's I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. That'll be great. actually made a list, but I'm, uh, I'm doing them out of order because I just mentioned Blade Runner, and as it turns out, <laughs> fucking Blade Runner's in this list. Blade Runner 2049. Blade Runner, I thought was, was such, such an amazing movie. First of all, things I don't know about this film that I'm about to find out, yeah, Harrison Ford's in this. I don't know if that was a good idea. I mean, I guess we're just doing the story of... Here's the story from Blade Runner. Okay, here's later on. I guess. Anyway. Blade Runner was a huge film. It, for those who didn't see it, the film that came out in 19-freaking-82... Man, this is just... this. The last few years have just been the resurrection of franchises, hasn't it? Blade Runner was groundbreaking. If I'm a little hesitant about saying, ah, Blade Runner 2049 will be amazing, because I'm hesitant on a lot of levels. Blade Runner was amazing because there was nothing else like it. So when you're doing a sequel to it, how do you do a sequel to that? Will it be as groundbreaking for films today as Blade Runner was in 82 logically that's impossible I still think it'll be a neat movie I just don't think it's gonna be anyway Blade Runner will look amazing I, like I said I, I have my my hesitancy about it but at the same time the fact that there is a bar for this film and Everyone involved in it is aware that there is a high, high bar with a lot of expectations on it are going to try to reach that bar, at least reach it. I don't think they'll succeed. I'm calling it. I don't think they'll, they'll succeed. But I think failing to reach that standard will still make an impressive movie. We'll see. We'll see. Best on our Cavalcade of Fun. Movies I, I am absolutely going to see in the theater in 2017. Last on the list, Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets. It's based on a 1967. Jesus fucking Christ. 1967. Uh, comic called Valerian and Lorelei and it is archetypical of and at the same time standard setting groundbreaking looking at because you know I saw the trailer for it and I was like whoa this looks amazing and I heard you know it's based on this on Valerian, uh, Valerian and Lorelei and I'm like, ah, oh, this will be cool. So I started looking it up, and every single image I, that I come across looks super duper familiar to me. Because I used to read heavy metal quite a lot when I was younger. Maybe I should start again, or at least eh, check it out. I don't know. Does it still exist? Ah, fuck, I don't know. Um, my point being, Valerian and Loreline was an amazing series that went from uh, 1967 to, I used to know, 2000-something. 2000 freaking hell final installment was 2000 fucking 10 so it had been going on for a while wow damn um <laughs> anyway it looks amazing it looks interesting i mean the 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 premise of this so much was inspired by valerian and loreline and the fact they've got Dane Dehan, who I think is awesome. I don't know who Kara Deleuven, or whatever her name is. I'm terrible with names. But, yeah, I'm, I'm very interested in this. 
and it's some of the same people who did uh, Fifth Element. Sold. Sold and sold. Take any one of the storylines from heavy metal era magazines. Uh, any of the Milo Manera. Uh, what the fuck else? Um, Frank Frazetta. Uh, God, I could go on. But... And, and that's not my point. My point is, quickly, 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 because I'm trying to get through all this shit quickly and make a short video. <laughs> um, my point is, that is a very cool premise. I, of things I want to see resurrected and put in a movie. Uh, fuck Tetris and Battleship. Give me more of this shit. Take every single storyline from Heavy Metal, throw them into a movie. I'm, just, I'm so on board. You won't Take my money now. Here it is. Take it all. Uh, I am very excited about this. Once again, even if this is a muddled mess, and it could be, it'll still be gorgeous. It'll still be... It's, it looks fun. It looks really fun. Like a lot of these, even if they're... Even if these are, are C-rated movies, and I can see a couple that might be, they're still going to be fun to watch. And I'll still be happy that I saw them in the theater. I can't think of a single one. I mean, unless one of these is terrible, then uh, at the very least I get the fun of coming back to this camera and shitting on them for YouTube. Hooray. Uh, that's all from me. That was my list. These are the films I am going to see. There might be more. If anyone has suggestions, uh, I am way open to suggestions. I would love to add this list. This is 12 movies right here. That's one a month. And I'm, I'm down for, for more. If someone has any... Like I said, I stumbled across I was completely unaware of this. I'm so out of the loop. It's amazing. If anyone has any other suggestions, please comment below. like Or send me a message or something. I'm, I'm very interested in what else is going on next year movie-wise. Because it seems like a really crazy year for movies. This year was too, but early on. It, this 2016 kind of blew its wad early, although I really liked Doctor Strange, and that was just this month. But still, it didn't sustain itself well. This is, this is wild. This is a lot of movies over, over the course of a year, and we'll see how that turns out. Uh, anyway, like and subscribe if you're inclined to. Uh, that's me. I'm out.